Hi there, guys. So we're going into unit 14 here. Unit 14 is all about uh, testing whether or not the patterns that you believe exist for data are valid. OK, so we're going to do many different types of tests for this. We're going to start off with a Spearman's rank test. So let's have a look at this. I've just copied the important information across to here. So we're talking about the Spearman's rank test here. Um, so this is useful when you believe that there is a relationship between two variables such that when one increases, the other increases, or when one increases, the other decreases, but not necessarily any in any kind of pattern that you've seen before. So this is not necessarily linear regression. This is not necessarily uh, exponential regression or power model regression. Um, this is just saying simply that I, I believe that as one increases, the other increases as well. So the other bit of data increases as well. So this one might, for example, be an exponential pattern. But it's true to say that the lowest on the x-axis, uh, the, the lowest bit of information that we have on the x-axis is also the lowest bit of information that we have on the y-axis. So that might be a student who's getting a result both in uh, maths and physics. OK, and these all might be students here. And we're looking for some kind of correlation, but not, not necessarily linear. OK, so, um, so the way in which we get rid of whatever pattern is behind this, just to check whether if one thing increases, the other increases, or if one thing decreases, the other increases, or vice versa, then we're going to rank things to start off with. So uh, here we go. Here's some information down here at the bottom. One second. So here's here's a an example down here, and you can see that we have information for x and you have information for y here as well. And here it looks like there might be a negative relationship between the two of them. I can see that the highest result here for x is associated with the lowest result here for y. Um, and yeah, in fact, the highest result for Y is associated with the lowest result for X. That might not be the case. There might just be some negative relationship, but it uh, happens to be the case in, in this case. So we need to rank these to start off with. Now, the book suggests that you start by ranking the highest one as number one and the lowest one as number. In this case, there's six bits of information. So the lowest one would be six. Now, it's possible that you could do this the other way around as well, because um, a formula, we'll talk about this in a second, uses the differences between those ranks. And so really wouldn't matter if you go from top to bottom or bottom to top, as long as you're consistent for both sets of data. OK, now. Um, the book also gives you this formula. Or it talks about this formula. And this, this you may see online. You may see it in other places. This is not the formula which we are using in this case. This is a formula. It's an easy formula to use. It's easier than what we actually use, which is the product moment correlation coefficient. Now, we use the product moment correlation coefficient to find the R value, which I know you've done before for linear regression. But we're going to do it with the ranked values, not with the values which are given here in the table. OK, now, the reason why this is talked about is because this is much simpler than using this. So this is a simpler version of this. And it, and it works almost all of the time, apart from if you have shared ranks. And so in this case, you can see because we have two numbers which are the same in the table, we have shared ranks. So this will be slightly wrong. In fact, what I'm going to do now for, for a minute is show you how this works with, uh, with, with this thing here. You can skip ahead if you want, but you can just get the idea of this thing in terms of making the ranks. OK, so uh, let's just have a look across to Excel. So here we go. I'll put the information into Excel and I'll put my rankings in there as well. You can see I've got 45 associated with one. And then the second highest is 34 for the X's and the third highest is 29. And then fourth and the fifth values um, are joint, are tied. So we give them a rank of 4.5. And then we move on to the sixth value here, 
which is 17, which is which I'm going to put in six there. So that's the lowest one. Now I've done exactly the same with the Ys. Okay, so 14 was the highest, eight, eight was the lowest, um, 11 was uh, joint, middle, third, and fourth value, so I put 3.5 there. Now, if we use this formula, which, by the way, is, is kind of like the cheat method, we'll see that this is slightly wrong, and then I'll show you the way to do it on the calculator. So um, if we work out the differences between these, we've got this take away, uh, not that one, take away C9, so C9 there, and we've got that value squared as well, so we've got this value here squared, and then I'm just gonna take those and drag them across. Okay, so you can see that I've just dragged the formulas across there. So for example, this one is now H8 take away H9. Now, I guess why I guess the, a reason why we're squaring these is, is to make all of these answers here positive. Okay, so we're squaring them. Um, we want then the sum of these. So it's saying the sum in the formula here. So let's take the sum of these things here, sum of d squared. There we go. And then R is defined, or RS, so Spearman's rank, um, is defined here to be one take away six times the sum. So that's exactly what I've typed in here, six times K12 divided by, um, and then N is the number of uh, observations which we have. So that's six. Okay, well, we have two bits of information for each of those uh, observations, but we have six uh, uh, columns here in our chart. So six, and then six squared take away one. And there you go. You can see I've, I've come up with an answer of minus 0 0.9. Okay, so as I said, this is not the one which we're going to be using, but it's kind of nice to know how to do that on Excel. So let's have a look at the actual answer on this one. So let's just skip ahead on the book for that. So let's see, down here we're seeing the actual answer is minus 0 0.956. So it's slightly different to what that formula has given us. Now this just comes from the PMCC from your calculator. Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. So let's talk that one through as well. So let's just say we're not going to use this one here we use the PMCC on the GDC instead so to talk that one through on the calculator uh, you're going to go to sheets so you go to home and then go to sheets and let's go let's just do this again myself okay so we go to sheets and then we're going to put in our ranks so we're going to put in these values here and these values here. So I'm going to start with 4.5 for my X column, and then 2, and then 6, and then 4.5, and then 3, and then 1. Okay, in the next column, we're going to put in 2, 5, 1, 3.5, 3.5, and 6. So now my information is um, in two columns. So I've changed this, I've transposed this, I've put it into two columns, some in the X column, some in the Y column, or rather the A and the B column on the TI Inspire. So then you go to Menu, you go to Statistics, and instead of going to Stats Tests, we can go to Stats Calculations. So Stats Calculations, we'll look at, uh, we'll look at the linear regression, so what we're doing here is, let's just type that one in. So we're going to stats, stats calculations. Then we're going to linear regression. Okay, so that's what we were used to doing from before. Now we can choose either the, let's check it out, what options do they give us? We can choose either the MX plus B model or the A plus BX model. It doesn't matter. Um, I did the MX plus B model before. I'm going to do the A plus BX model now just to check that it's the same thing. Um, so I'm, I've clicked on that. I'm saying my X list is in A, square brackets. My Y list is in B, square brackets. And then the frequency is 1. And the results column is going to be C. So I'm going to press OK on that. And then I can see that I'm getting the information which is coming out here. So if you 
have a little look down, you'll get A, you'll get B, you'll get R squared, um, and then you get R. So R is minus 0 0.9558, which obviously to three significant figures is giving you this. Okay, so it's showing us that we're getting strong neg negative correlation here. There is a strong negative association between these two bits of information here. Uh, we do not necessarily know that it's linear. In fact, we don't know the model which it follows. We just know that there is a negative association. That is to say, the highest rank is likely to be associated with the lowest rank from the other variable and, and vice versa. Okay, now in the book, after the exercise, they give us this table here. And I think that this is pretty crucial here because you can well imagine that in your exams, you'll be asked to follow up by discussing whether or not this is a good measure of correlation. Okay, so to recap, we have simply used the correlation coefficient. Okay, so the normal thing we've done with linear regression, except for we've used the ranks. So they say, well, what are the advantages of Spearman's rank? In other words, why didn't you just use the PMCC in the first place? You know, why did you have to rank things? So the important thing is that this can be used on data which is not linear. And moreover, not just that it's not linear, it's that you don't know the model behind it. Because if you thought it was an exponential model, you would use exponent, an exponential regression model. Okay, so it's important that um, this is a really good test for when we don't have linear data, and we don't know the pattern that, that, that is behind both of these sets of data. Um, it says here as well that it can be used. Another advantage is if we don't have the original data, but we just have the ranks, then we can still use this. So say we have the results from a race, but we don't have, um, we don't have the times of the competitors, say, for example, but we have... Um, we know who came first, second, third, and so on, then we could still use this even though we've lost the original data. The other thing is, even if there are some outliers in this case, say, for example, this said 100 here and not 45, the result will be exactly the same. Um, so this, wherever those outliers are, if, say, for example, this one was um, a mis miscalculated value or an error in, in your input, it wouldn't make a great deal of difference, especially if we had lots of information. So outliers don't greatly affect this, uh, th this um, calculation, this statistic. Okay then, guys, uh, there's perhaps another little bit to, th to say. Perhaps what I missed was right at the start, they call this um, monotonic behavior. So a value of zero shows no monotonic behavior. A value of one means that the set of data is strictly increasing. So one would mean that the ranks associate with each other exactly. You know, like, for example, if we went one, two, three, and this is one, two, three, and so on. So if that was the case, then, then all of our crosses would lie exactly on the line, which your R would be equal to one. So one means that the data is strictly increasing, and minus, minus one means it's strictly decreasing. And obviously, there are varying degrees of, of um, monotonic behavior here. Okay, and a value of zero means that there is no monotonic behavior. Okay, so that's just totally scattered all over the place. Okay, right, thanks for listening. Um, there are plenty of tests in this chapter. I will endeavor to do a few more videos on them.